Welcome to the video. This is the final part of a four-part series on debugging RG Pilot code. In this video, we'll be talking about running the SIDL simulator on the autopilot hardware itself instead of on a PC. Why would we want to do this? Well, it allows testing of specialized devices like parachutes, payload drops, etc while on the ground without having to endanger the vehicle in the air. It allows testing of control surface movement as it goes through a mission to make sure they're all correct. You can verify the telemetry and GCS control subsystems also uh, while that, and uh, allows you to check out things such as specialized scripts uh, to see how they would function throughout the, the mission. So the steps in doing this, first save off all your parameters, waypoints, rally points, fences, in a file, uh, because we're going to overwrite them. Build the firmware for the board, including the SIDL simulation software, and load it into the board. Attach a ground control station, and then run the simulator just as if you're running it on a PC. So assuming you saved off all your waypoints and parameters into a file for replacement later on after you're through simulating, this is how we build and download the firmware onto the board. There's a build script um, shown there, and then you just designate the board target with a dash dash board, designate the vehicle type with dash dash vehicle, and then to get the simulation physics right, you do sim class and the uh, vehicle that you're simulating, in this case, plane, a plane, and then we upload it to the board with the dash dash upload command. Now that it's compiled, it'll load onto the board. Once on the board, we'll attach the ground station. In this case, we'll start up MAF proxy. There it shows the uh, plane. And the first thing <clears throat> that we'll need to do is, since there's no, unless you have an RC receiver attached, um, I'll show you the pre-arms, and you'll see it's showing that it requires RC. Uh, it hasn't... Uh, completely completed the initialization yet. Now it has, so it's just lacking RC. So either you can have your RC receiver attached or you can do an override. In this case, we're just setting the throttle override and providing a throttle signal. At this point, you'll see that the RC uh, is uh, valid and we can arm, accepts arming. We'll do a mode takeoff and the simulator is running and showing the uh, plane taking off. You can do all the normal SIDL functions, put it into cruise mode. I'm going to uh, raise the elevator, stick, or, uh, or pull it back actually, and you'll see it gaining altitude in cruise, just as it would normally in flight. And then I'll reset the, uh, you can see it gaining altitude there. And then I'll reset the elevator back to uh, neutral so it holds altitude. And make a turn with, uh, with uh, the, the roll input. And then neutralize the roll input. Um, and then RTL. So the simulator is running just as you'd expect it to. As 
So now we'll try and we'll change it to, from plane, we'll change it to copter. So we'll build for copter. And change the simulator class so the physics are right for multi-copter. And you notice I misspelled, actually, the sim class. And now this will give me an error. It should have been camel case multi-copter with the capital C. And we'll see when the build gets toward the end, the simulator portion of the software will throw an error. So now I'll correct that. You see a small C, I'll go back and change it to capital C. So now it's got the proper SIM class and it'll run through the, the build process and load onto the board. I'll fast forward through that. So now we'll reattach MAV proxy. And see there's a multicopter sitting there. And we'll prepare it. Uh, look at the pre-arms. And right now it says that the frame class hasn't been set. So we need to go check frame type. Actually, frame class is probably already defaulted. Uh, but the frame type, um, <clears throat> or rather the frame class, is 0. And we'll set it to be 1 for an X quad. I want to check the uh, frame type just to be sure. It should be set up for X. It is. So the normal defaults, you don't do anything else, brings it up in this unconfigured state. So you have to configure it for a copter. And then we'll make RC go good with RC, uh, just setting the throttle to idle it's because I don't have an RC receiver attached on this board. We'll put it in loiter. Should be able to arm the, th arm the throttle. It's armed. And then I'm going to set the throttle to a full up, climb at max uh, loiter rate. And you'll notice a peculiarity of the simulator. You'll see that the copter is spinning around in a little whirlish dervish. That's because, because I don't have an RC receiver, and I haven't sent an RC override to the yaw. For some reason, the yaw controller gets a little screwed up. I just put rudder neutral in as an override, and you see it's holding uh, yaw steadily. So I'm going to set it into guided mode, mode guided. See that's been accepted and now I'll go over to the map and fly to a position at 100 meters and turns and off it goes toward that guided point. Try RTL, and it stops and starts proceeding back to home, where it will get into position over the home landing point and then proceed to descend. So now we'll simulate rover, and I've set up the command line with the build for rover and the sim class for sim rover. And this is required to get the simulator to simulate rover. And these symbols are a little strange because you don't see them when using normal SIDL because they're buried and translated inside the code in the code, but um, they're listed in the wiki for the various vehicle types for the simulator on on this hardware uh, SIDL simulation. 
So we've built the firmware and we're downloading it to the board for Rover. When that completes, we'll attach a ground station and the simulation should be running. Attach Mav Proxy. And we have a little Rover symbol showing. So we'll set it into acro mode. And send an RC override for the throttle. Note it's at 1500 because this is a centered stick vehicle. And at this point, we should be able to pre arm and, I mean, arm the throttle, and we are. Now we'll set uh, RC stick for throttle all the way forward at max speed. And it's going to settle down somewhere around uh, the cruise speed, which is somewhere around 5 meters per second. I look at the speeds. Cruise speed is, oh, it's actually 2 meters per second, so it's going, uh, now it's settling back down. Took a little while to get back down. It's down to 3 meters a second, tending toward the 2 meter a second cruise. Of course, we haven't tuned anything on this uh, for cruise speed. Uh, you can follow the wiki for doing that. So let's change uh, the speeds. What I did was I have a little param file that up the speed for waypoint to 5 and the cruise speed to 9, which I loaded. Let's load a mission. Have a little can mission. Loaded that, let me see, we'll switch to auto, and it'll start taking off uh, for, the, for the mission. And the ground speed is coming back up to the mission waypoint speeds. Of course, it's turning, so I had to stop. Okay, on to the next waypoint. Yeah, the speed hasn't been tuned. It kind of overshoots a little bit and then settles back down to the targets. So, remember I added those parameters after the fact. You can actually put those and any other default parameter that you want to set up with a uh, new file when you build it, uh, just like you can firmware when you build it with the default stop parm files. So I have a, that file that I loaded was that rover par, parameters dot parm. And so this will just build it and install those as the defaults for those speeds instead of two meters per second. Now I'm going to use Mission Planner. Yeah, this is Mission Planner running under Linux. I'm going to use Mission Planner um, to look at the default parameters. And I'll go over and connect. Look at the parameter list. at the speeds and you can see the defaults now are not two meters per second but waypoint speed default is five meters per second 
and the default for cruise speed is 9 meters per second now. So you can load uh, defaults as you build this, just as you can normal firmware. Thanks for watching, and I hope this has been helpful.